Fáilte. My name is Andrew Healy and I'm a lover and drinker of Irish whiskey. I'm on a journey of discovery to learn as much as I can about the great spirit of the Emerald Isle. Along that journey, I'm lucky enough to meet other people who are passionate about Irish whiskey. And the My Favourite Irish podcast is their story and their favourite Irish whiskey. Whether that's their current favourite, their first ever dram, or the one that has a special place in their life. On today's episode, I got to spend some time recently with Angela Chisholm, owner of Trailhead Liquor in Bend, Oregon. And we talked about Angela and her favourite Irish whiskey, Yellow Spot. Listen along. Normally this is when I say Falcha Arash, which is welcome back to the bar, but uh, I'm at someone else's bar today, so I want to say Gurmaka to Angela here at Trailhead Liquor and Bend. Angela, thank you very much for, uh, for having us here. I'm excited to have you. Yeah, so um, your liquor store? Yes. Uh, Trailhead Liquor? That's correct. Tell us about the name, where it came from. and So I've lived in Bend for about 18 years and I absolutely love the outdoors. It's so much a part of the Bend culture that, you know, hiking, biking, kayaking, whatever your heart's desire when it comes to being in the outdoors, you can do it right here. And for me, I became a really avid hiker. So then it made sense to call it Trailhead. Okay. Um, or something you know, along those lines. <laughs> yeah. Funny story, I actually tried to call it Trails End first, and there's a whiskey called that, and they said, please don't do that. <laughs> so they were nice to you before they sent you that? Well, I kind of poked the bear on that one. <laughs> I wanted to make sure before I spent a lot of money on signs and other things that, you know, it wasn't going to be a problem. So it ended up being Trailhead, which is fine. A lot of times I like to bring a dram on my hikes. Yeah, no it's surprise. Yeah. Um, usually Scotch or Irish, and um, so it makes sense that you stop here before you head out. Yeah, no, it makes sense, and of course here we're on the north end of Bend. Correct. Uh, one of our favorite hikes, as we've talked about before we jumped on camera, is to the north of us here up at Smith Rock, so straight up past Redmond, and, and that's a place we love to go. Um, I, I would say that when I get to the end of a, a, a hike, we prefer to have a kind of a cooler cocktail, so uh, yeah, the dram, it may be in the winter, but See, for me, it's always like mid-hike. You find a place to sit and enjoy the view, and you have a dram with your friends. Okay, I can, I can see that one. And um, how long have you been here at Trailhead Liquor? So Trailhead will be open, has been open for four years this right. month. Good yeah, you. so and it's been exciting. What, what prompted you to get into, into well, the retail biz? Um, I had a friend that was in the industry. She took over an existing store. So I kind of watched her journey on that. And um, around the time when my kids were getting older and I was really looking for some other way to spend my time since they didn't need me so much anymore, um, the OLCC decided that they were going to expand uh, and allow more stores to be in Bend. And that, at that point, I applied for the store. And it was a pretty long process, took many, many months. Yeah, I think we, um, we could almost do a video just on absolutely. Oregon, Oregon liquor laws. <laughs> yep, it's definitely unique, but um, I was granted the license, and then it took some time, obviously, to get a lease in place and the build out and things along those lines. They and obviously don't help you dealing with your landlord, etc. Not that's, at all. That's, that's up to me, yeah. Okay. And so 2018, you've obviously survived. Um, Thrived. I mean... It was not a bad business to be in during COVID. A lot of people drank a whole lot. <laughs> um, I mean, it was a little scary at first because we were considered essential and you didn't initially know how it was spreading and we couldn't find masks and all these things. So there was a certain amount of stress that came along with it. But I think the growth that I experienced during COVID was completely abnormal for a relatively new business. And we've kind of just stayed there at this point. So continued? I know we're, yeah. not, we're not done with it yet. We're, we're shooting this video in mid-August of 22, but we're not out of the woods yet, so to speak. But business has stayed up there? It has stayed up there, yep. Good, good I think people found us and with so many restaurants closed, people were learning how to make cocktails themselves, and we have everything you need here the, to make any kind of cocktail you'd want. So people started learning mixology and yeah. uh, expanding their palettes and repertoires to uh, make up for what they couldn't get inside a restaurant anymore. Yeah, no. And anything special that you guys did here? Any kind of encouraging of that online, helping people out? I mean, I love having 
a quirky sense of humor. Like there, when, when things are rough, like the best thing you can do is try to find humor in the situation. So a lot of times I would post things that were somewhat absurd, but at the same time, it's like, we're all in this together. Let's have a laugh, have a dram. Or two. Or six. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we'll come out the other side stronger and better. Yeah. No, I agree. Great. Good on you guys for that. So we are, obviously we're standing here right in front of your Irish whiskey section, which I first experienced back in May when I was up here. And I was, I have to say, I was impressed with the selection, the availability. I think I took two bottles with me then. I think I, it was a, a Red Breast PX that I'd been... Uh, oh yeah, that's a good one. Still have to open <laughs> it, but... Uh, oh. So who's responsible here for it? And obviously, you know, we do some shots of other parts of the store here, but great selection of Irish, Scotch, American. I, I was ogling your rum section, which mm -hmm. is right in front of us here. Who's, who's responsible for, for sourcing and, and ordering and making so those decisions? A lot of that falls on the store manager, Justin. He okay. is, I mean, I love whiskey and he really loves whiskey. Like he nerds out on it all the time and does research and knows more than I will probably ever know about it. And he is 100% responsible for the amazing selection you see here. Great. And, and a lot of his research then is just reading. Is there any absolutely great tastings or um, COVID made a little mess of that. We okay. couldn't really meet in public, but prior to that, there were definitely all sorts of trade shows and um, gave you an opportunity to try new things. Um, but I would say a majority of how he's found things is just research. Yeah. In terms of like, your, your customers coming in, mm -hmm. obviously, like I said, you have a, a wonderful selection of Irish here. Are customers prepared to chop and change? If they're a big bourbon fan, will they try an Irish single grain, for example? Or do, do you find people stay in their lane on their... It really depends. I think, um, I think you know, like a true Jack Daniels drinker really doesn't stray from that. Like, if that's what they love, they're going to stick with it. Um, but I, I feel like the best gateway to Irish is somebody who starts with Canadian. Canadian's very easy to drink. It's, um, you know, a, I wouldn't say simple, but it's um, very palatable. And, um, and then... If somebody is like, I really love Canadian, but I want to try something else, a Irish is the next natural way okay. to go in that direction because it's also, you know, a little on the lighter side. You don't have to worry about smoke so much as people get fearful when they're drinking scotches. <laughs> so it's a great segue for somebody who's starting in Canadian to okay. move on to Irish. Okay. A little more complexity there than you see in a lot of Canadians. Um, so it just can really be a mind opener and, you know, change your palate in that way. And then uh, with this wonderful selection, you obviously have some folks who are Irish to the core, so to speak. When it comes sure. To their, are, are they adventurous or do, do they, because I'm, I, I know I am. Right. Obviously. I'm on this journey to, to discover Irish whiskey. Uh, do people stick to the same old when they come? I think it, it's a mixed bag, but I, I would say one of my favorite opportunities is when somebody comes in and they're like, I know I love Jameson, but I want to try something else. Okay. What should I try next? Okay, and the answer is? I mean, there's a variety. <laughs> I like to ask a couple of questions and see what it is that they like about Jameson. Like, you know, if it's like, oh, it's, you know, it's really easy to drink and it's light and sweet and this and that, then, you know, I'm not going to immediately leap them up to like a Connemara or something up like that. I would say, you know, what about Blackbush? That's excellent. This is a good little segue right here that you could try something new and see if it's your jam. And maybe it's not, maybe it is, but it's definitely a good experience to try something new. So um, obviously Christmas is a, you know, the holiday season a few months away, but do you find that people will treat themselves? Oh, absolutely. The and it's a great adult gift, right? Because so many of us have what we need so why not get something for somebody that you wouldn't, they wouldn't otherwise get for themselves? You know, so it's like, what do I get my boss? Oh, how about a Jameson 18 or a Ryder Tears cask strength? You yeah, know, these are great opportunities. I said to you before, it's the first I've seen up there on the top shelf. So. Yep, pretty but, new. Yeah, good on you guys for having that. So um, with all that talk mm -hmm. about Irish whiskeys and ones that we love, the reason for being here is for you to share with us and, and the world uh, your favorite Irish. So I got in touch with you last week and you sent you the kind of the, the run a show ahead of time. And um, you said you were in a quandary over the weekend trying to, between two. I so. was, and I settled on the yellow spot because I think it is such a phenomenal Irish. 
Um, for people that maybe think they don't like Irish, I guarantee if they like whiskey and they try this, they're gonna like it. And they're gonna be like, this is different than most Irishes I've tasted. Yeah, and, so, and again, as I said to you before we jumped on camera, this is a first for me. I'm excited for you to yeah. try this. It is so good. So I, 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 you know, my journey into Irish whiskey was through Redbreast 12. I've had Green's also Butter, phenomenal. And, yeah, and I've had some 15, um, which is a really interesting different. In, uh, in Redbreast, it was a real eye-opener, and I'm intrigued about uh, the yellow spot. We do have a bottle of green spot, uh, Chateau Montalena, that they've done. At oh, home, right, yeah. I haven't yet opened. Obviously, living in Napa, Montalena is something that's uh, a, a huge part of our history there. So I am excited yeah. uh, to try the yellow spot. So um, I suppose we should... I say we board. open it up. Yeah. Interestingly, um, I, I'm not sure how much of the background of the spot stories you know, but... Uh, Back in the day, uh, in the late 1800s into the early 1900s, it was it was aged uh, in the cellars of Mitchell and Son, who are still a wine merchant of Dublin, aged in their cellars in Fitzwilliam Lane. And bizarrely enough, my father owned a newsstand or a news agent, as we call it in Ireland, literally 400 meters or so from there. And I never knew that this stuff was aged in the, in the cellars, literally that close. So my That's dad pretty had cool. Shop since the 70s, so. Um, they don't age it there anymore, but that's where it started back in the day. So, um, so my yeah. husband and I had speculated what the spots meant, you know, because there's we have yellow, green, blue, red, and variations of the different spots. And we had thought, because we had traveled in Scotland and we noticed that they like dabbed sheep with different colors, to, we're like, well, maybe that's where it came from. So I ended up looking it up because I was curious, and that was not the case. Well, sounded did, like they, a good story, they, but they, they, did, uh, they dabbed the barrels. Yeah, they had the barrels. Yeah, so, <laughs> but not, it's not from the sheep. Um, and I'm sure it's coming your way soon. It was released at Whiskey Live uh, in Dublin in uh, early June, the, the gold spot. Oh, that's exciting. Way. So I um, asked my kind parents in Dublin to go out and buy a bottle for me. So we have a bottle waiting there for next time we make it to Dublin. That's so, amazing. Um, right, well, we should say slancha. Slancha. Yeah. So what is it about? I mean, just looking at it, that is like liquid sunshine right there. It's got some nice legs on it. And on the nose, I get so much ripe fruit. And there's like a rich, warm quality to it. Yeah, there's, it's interesting. With a number of Irish whiskeys, I get a, it's a kind of a Christmas cake. Oh Irish yeah. Christmas cake, kind of warm baking spice character. Mm -hmm. Often when I read tasting notes or hear people tasting Irish whiskeys, they say it's got a spiced character. Well, sp spice runs the gamut. <laughs> it sure does. So for me, a lot of the characteristic is that kind of warm bread mm. baking spice character, which I love kind of. Right now I'm getting like apple. And like interestingly, one of the things I've learned is the main yeast used in the fermentation process is a yeast drink called MX. It's been developed over the years and used commonly by the, by the folks at Irish distillers. And it gives, apparently, a clamp that apple pear character that oh, you smell in a number of Irish yeah. whiskeys actually comes from the yeast. Interesting. So even though they say the barrel is 70% of the flavor, the yeast in a number of the, uh, number of the spots really comes to the fore. And this one is actually three cask matured. So we've got lots of flavor going on here. God, it's just, it's one of those where I just want to smell it all day <laughs> long. It's just got all sorts going on. Well, I say we taste it. I'm excited for your. Okay, we just need to uh, stop the video and <laughs> we will pull up a couple of chairs. And... <laughs> See why it's your favorite. It's delicious. Yeah. So obviously we're you know tasting them in a, in a Glencairn glass. When you'd be sipping this at home, sip it straight. Cup I am water. a neat whiskey, whiskey drinker through and through. It doesn't matter the proof. It doesn't matter. I I just love it neat. That's my go-to. Okay. We do have the opportunity here, uh, gen only with domestics, but to pick barrels. You know, single barrels. And in that situation, I will add water just because that's what other drinkers might be doing. And I'm trying to appeal to everyone when I do that. But that's kind of the exception to that. Okay. Wow. Thank you for. Um, ah, you got to love it. Yeah. No, it's a 
lovely drop, a really lovely drop. Um, so back to Trailhead. Um, I told you that we love to go up to Smith Rock. It's one of a number of walks we love to do. What's what's your favorite? To go for so just like with my whiskey selection, I'm torn because there's so many great opportunities here. But I'd have to say probably my favorite would have to be Broken Top. There's a glacial lake at the top, not quite at the top of Broken Top, but right underneath it that's like framed by the mountain okay. itself called No Name Lake. Okay. And I it's remember that one. this teal blue, gorgeous, and it's I mean, it's just an epic hike. I love taking my kids when they were little. I have taken many, many friends. Um, things have changed a little bit in Bend where you're now required to have a permit to go okay. there, okay. which makes it a little harder. Um, but it's absolutely an epic hike to me. Not impossible for the novice. Okay, good. You know, no ropes or anything like that are needed. You just need a good snack, a dram. <laughs> of, of, of this and you know a bunch of water things like that and it's just gorgeous and i'm assuming it's to the west of us is it? um yes okay yeah because we yeah. we came up here uh, back in the spring and my wife looked up all trails because we wanted to try and do something new sure and it had the number five zero zero and plus available for walks trails hikes in and around bend I yeah it's, it's this mecca for absolutely outdoor. And you could so, spend every day exploring a different trail yeah. and you probably still wouldn't hit them all. Yeah, so when we put Broken Top on our list, it's uh, something for us to consider. Um, for visitors to Bend, obviously I, I'm a big fan of this part of the world. I've been sure. coming here for 13 years now. Um, I firstly fell in love with all the beer you guys have up there. My, right. My favorite brewery is, is Crux. So we, oh, we, we love Crux too. We go there. <laughs> it's, it's literally the only place I go there now for, for a beer. Any new breweries that we and people coming here should be looking at first? Uh, Van Henyon uh, is fairly new. Okay. Um, they, I can't remember if they have a tasting room yet, but you can buy their beer okay. here and they've been just killing it. They are, absolutely love everything of theirs that I've tried. So I think that's a new one to look out for, for sure. Okay. And then as I'm journeying into spirits, uh, I've been visiting too many bars and drinking too many cocktails. And last night we had the pleasurable joy of going and having a drink at San Simone. Is oh, it yeah. Um, we were looked after there by John. What a wonderful list of cocktails. Yep. I, I, I know it just won an award here recently. Any any other good bars with great cocktails in town that people? Oh, absolutely. There's a ton. Okay. Um, certainly San Simone is wonderful. Uh, I'm trying to think of where my favorite cocktails are, really. Um, by the way, I didn't mean for you to become visit Bend all the time. Oh, <laughs> no, that's tour, okay. I love it, actually. So um, for breakfast, we love the lemon tree. I don't yep. know if you've been there. Yep. And uh, I love a Bloody Mary. My husband does not, but they have what's called a Jealous Mary, and it's made with tomatillos, so it's green, and he loves it. So that's an excellent cocktail to try. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And I also love Bas Taurus. They have some really great, unique things on their menu. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're, you know, even though we live in a wonderful place in, in Napa where we've got great restaurants, we love the food scene up here. Oh, I think it's amazing. Um, having, you know, also grown up in California, I think, I think they're knocking it out of the park here. Yeah. There's so many great places, including like food trucks and yeah. things like that. And I would say Bridge 99, another great brewery to try if you haven't okay. tried that. It's, it's nearby here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we first came upon the lot, I'm going to say, about six years ago. Oh, yeah. And now there seems to be three or four knockoffs of it. All over. It's, Great. I'm like, is there a tipping point at some point on the food truck thing? But <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, uh, it, it, it's great to, uh, to see it. Okay, um, well, I think we're probably going to turn off the camera in a few seconds, and you and I will enjoy a little bit more of this. But uh, in the meantime, Gaurav Mahogat again, thank you very much. Oh, I've enjoyed for, it. Um, for having us here. Um, to those of you who love Irish whiskey and want to get your hands on a bottle, obviously you can see where we're standing, top shelf, all the way down to the bottom shelf here, and, and, and there's nothing bottom shelf about it. Not from, a thing. From West Cork or, nope. or McConnell's or um, That's you know, one of the, so it's, uh, the one shame, I would say, about our store is we don't have a lot of bottom shelf here because yeah. we just have a more sophisticated drinker that shops here. So when you see something on the bottom shelf, it, it's never automatic that it is something that will be cheap and not a good experience for you. Yeah, no, I, I, I love it. I'm, I'm salivating here. We'll turn off the camera and I'll probably do some damage with the credit card. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, we'll say, um, say slancha again. Slancha. And thank you.
Thanks for taking the time to listen to this episode. You'll find more episodes wherever you get your podcasts, and you'll find the My Favourite Irish video series at irishwhiskeylad.com. That's Irish Whiskey with an E, L-A-D dot com. Until next time, Sláinte Wah. <laughs>